One of the best deterrents to selfishness is to see an example of selflessness. And that's really what we see here at the end of Nehemiah chapter 5. Nehemiah is not trying to promote himself. He just wants all of these nobles that he's talking to to see his example and understand that as a servant leader, he needed to make sacrifices for the people, not use his position to benefit himself, but use his position to benefit the people. And I think that those people in Harrisburg, those people in Washington, would benefit greatly by looking at Nehemiah's example of selfless service while he was in a governmental position. You need to understand that Nehemiah was appointed the governor of Jerusalem by the king of the empire. Now, the empire was not a God-loving empire. They were pagans. And they were the, the kings of Persia were using their empire for their own profit. And you know what? Throughout their system, there would have been a lot of corruption as people were using their own position to control what was happening and use it for their own good. But yet Nehemiah says, look at my example. Here's what I did. And the first thing we see in verses 14 and 15 is that governments exist to serve the people. God did not create the people to serve the government. Verse 14, Nehemiah says, Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year, even unto the 2 and 30th year of Artaxerxes the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. So Nehemiah is telling these people, listen, I was the governor in this area for 12 years. And during that time, I did not take the bread of the governor. What was the bread of the governor? Well, former governors took food and money from the people. That was the governor's job. They could take whatever they wanted from the people and they could use it to benefit themselves. But Nehemiah said, I'm not going to do that. You know, he said, I'm not going to be a governor who puts a lot of regulations and puts a lot of control on the people. And uh, we see in verse 15 that Nehemiah was successful because he feared God and he served the people. Verse 15 says, but the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine besides 40 shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people, but so did not I because of the fear of God. You know, Nehemiah realized that he was accountable to God. You can see what the former governors had been doing. Uh, the former governors, it says they were chargeable unto the people. They were breaking God's law. And what were they doing? They were taking bread from the people. They were taking wine from the people. And they were taking money from the people. Now, is taxing the people wrong according to God? No, absolutely not. In fact, in, in the book of Leviticus, God... Um, enables his people to be taxed to support the temple to support government but these men were taking more from the people than they should have in fact they were taking silver they were taking food they were taking whatever they wanted and those things they were taking really should have been going to god and to god's worship now the people had to have a, make the difficult choice do i feed my children do i pay the tax or do i pay tithe to god the governors before Nehemiah were putting the people in the awful spot of choosing what they had to do. Instead, when Nehemiah came, he gets rid of all of the taxes and he says, I'm just going to trust God. Why? Because Nehemiah realized that he was accountable to God for the way that he led the people. He also realized that God had made him the governor for a very specific task. And that was the task of restoring worship there in the city. And so Nehemiah... He was able to take care of the people without raising his taxes. In fact, he used his office to benefit others and not himself. But Nehemiah was also successful because he chose to serve others. I want you to look very carefully at verses 16 through 18. And uh, maybe um, you, if you have a pencil paper, you can figure out how much food Nehemiah was giving out to the people. Verse 16 says, Yea, also, I continued in the work of this wall. Neither bought we any land, and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. 
Moreover, there were at my table a hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, besides those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep, also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor, but the bondage, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. You know, this is really the key here to curing selfishness in your own life. And that is get up and do something for others. Selfish people are always focused on themselves. Unselfish people are doing what? They are serving God. Guess what? Happy people are also out serving others and giving to others. You know, you might be sitting there, uh, wherever it is, and um, you might be saying, well, well, I can't. What can I do to others? There's nothing I can do to others. Listen, that is a selfish attitude when you think there's nothing that you can do for others. And let me just give you an example, okay? I, I've had people who live in mud huts come up to me and offer to give me money. I've had people living in mud huts cook up all the food that they had in their hut and offer to give it to me. Um, You know, I just just tell you kind of a funny story. The the first time I went to Uganda, um, the men that I went, the team that I went with, one of the other men said, listen, I'm I'm trying to get myself healthy so I can serve God better, so I'm going to give up soda for this trip. And so uh, he was my friend. I said, you know what, Nate? Uh, I'm going to give up soda too. I'm going to be there. I'm going to support you, okay? And uh, so when we got there, there's not really a whole lot of great options to drink. Basically, your option was water (laughs) or bottled soda. And uh, as we drove into town, there was this giant poster, a giant billboard that advertised Mountain Dew. And if you know me, you know I'm a big Mountain Dew fan, okay? I, I like Mountain Dew. For Christmas, what did my kids get me? A big case of Mountain Dew, you know? Father's Day's coming up, kids. You know what to get me, okay? Right? And uh, so we had, you know, this kind of funny joke that, you know what, uh, you can't have Mountain Dew. And, um, but uh, one day I was sent on a motorbike way out in the countryside, and uh, I was, you know, going to preach on that Sunday. And just before I got on the motorbike, the, the missionary said, now listen, okay, I know we got this agreement on soda. But if those people buy you soda, you got to drink it because they spent their last pennies on that soda for you. Like, okay, all right, I'm okay. I'm like, okay, I know what I want. I hope that they get me the right kind. All right. So, uh, you know, I ride out there and I, I preached a wonderful service with the people out there in their village, uh, preaching to them. And afterward, you know, they said, well, you, you know, you're going to have this meal over here. They would not let people come to their village without feeding them. And, you know, I, I sat down in a mud hut and you know, they brought over a pitcher of water. There's no running water. You wash your hands, the pitcher of water. And uh, they said, you know, we sent someone down to the corner, which it was about two miles away, to buy you a drink. Here you go. And they uncovered it. It was a Mountain Dew. Oh, man, I was so excited. That was great. But it was warm, okay? They didn't have any refrigeration. There was no electricity, but it was okay. You know what? Those people said, we're going to do something for that man. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're selfish, you just sit back and say, there's no way I can help others. There's nothing that I can do. But you know what? Nehemiah here, he said, I'm going to help these people no matter what. And he gave you a whole list of the things that he did. One, he kept working on the wall. It, it would have been very easy for Nehemiah to come back to the city and say, what's wrong with you people? This wall has been broken down for the past 50 years. You've done nothing. And maybe he could have oppressed them. He could have gotten whips out. He could have brought in slaves. But instead, what did he do? With his own bare hands, he went out to that wall and he began putting stones up on the wall. And he began organizing the people. said, hey, how about you work over there? And you work over there? And you work over there? Let's all go and let's work together. And, um, you know, he also got the other people together to work on the walls. And uh, he's putting them on the walls. But then... We find out here that for 12 years, as he served as the governor, he was feeding 150 people every day. Now, who was he feeding? Some of them were the rulers. Some of them were the people that were helping him administrate the city. But then it says other Jews. Who were those other Jews? Guess what? It's people that couldn't feed themselves. He was killing one ox and six sheep every day. Plus, it says fowls and all the drink that those people needed. Um, My question is, he was doing this without taxes at all. Where was all this food coming from? Guess what? God was providing. God was providing. 
Do we know where? No, we don't know every situation. But you know what? Every day his cooks went out and God provided the food. Here you go. Here it is. I guarantee you a lot of the food that came came out of Nehemiah's pocket. He was just paying for it himself. Where did he get the money? I don't know. But then a lot of it is God just bringing it in and saying, here you go. And you know what? When we trust God, when we commit to being selfless and we say, I'm going to help others, you know what? God's going to provide for us. God's going to take care of us. And God, as he gives to us, we get the opportunity to give to others. And you know what he did? Nehemiah makes a very important point here in verse 18. He says, we did it all without raising taxes. Why? Because the bondage was already heavy on the people. There was no way he could get worship restored in this city if the crime, the bondage was, going, was happening, if all these people are mortgaged to their neighbors. They couldn't worship. Nehemiah had to take care of the problem of selfishness first within the city. You know, really, as we conclude the chapter here in verse 19, Nehemiah says, Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. You know, uh, what about you in your own life? If God was keeping track of the things that you have done for others, how long would that list be? I know some of you, and I know that that list would be very, 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 very long. But you know what? I know that there are others of you out there that the list would be really short. Why? Because you're living for self. You're living for your own self. You're living for what you want. And what you, whatever you want, you wake up the morning and think, this is what I want right now. Even when you go to work, you're thinking, you know what, I got to get what I need. I got to get what I want right now. And you know what? How are you going to change? Let me encourage you. Start at home. What are you doing for your family? Are you correcting your kids according to God's word? Or are you correcting them in anger? When you are correcting your children in anger, you are being selfish. But you know what? You need to get that selfish attitude out of your home. Once you get it out of your home, you know what? Um, now you can get everything else under control at your home. Once you got everything else under control at your home, now what are you doing for others? Um, you might say, well, I, I don't know of anybody that I can help. Guess what? You don't know the other people in your church very well, do you? You need to talk to them. You need to go and, and make contact. You need to get them on the phone, send them a text, send them an email, say, hey, how can I pray for you? How can I encourage you? What can I do? Or maybe you and another brother or sister can just get together and say, hey, let's pray and let's ask God to show us who has needs and let's go and help them. You know what? Let's confess our selfishness and let's live in the fear of God so that we can help others. You know what? We cannot have proper worship in our local church if we have selfish people living in the church. If we have selfish people who are focused on me, guess what? Things are going to fall apart in the church. Let's confess our selfishness to God. Let's get it right. Let's follow Nehemiah's example. Why? So we can live at peace with each other and we can have proper worship in our church. Let's close our sermon this morning in prayer and let's ask God to help us be selfless people. Dear Lord, we thank you for this example we have here in Nehemiah chapter 5. Lord, we ask you to help us to be selfless people. People who are focused on your work. People who are focused on helping others and encouraging others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.